गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून हाँ आई नो आई नो यस्टरडे क्लास वॉज देयर ना हाँ जेट्स रीजन वी हैव कैप्टेड टुडे गुड आफ्टरनून बेटा गुड आफ्टरनून whole year long term online class someone is asking that is there anyone who is taking whole year yes beta there are i am telling you the answer there will be many who will be online throughout the year that is for sure last year also we ran an online course and a set of teacher we took the class till the end so there will be only difference is in the offline there is study hour and uh, if that study hour you can manage at home then online see both have both these have uh, their individual benefits and i mean advantage and disadvantage many not only study hours many other are there <clears throat> highest marks in online is 661 661, 666 यार, I think, 661 और 666. Is any got seat who take online? No, 661. What do you think? Seat? They will get a very good medical. There, there are so many. Okay. Now, what you can do? You can uh, just. Uh, uh it is always better to come to the college because then exact data you can collect or else my voice is coming to you na my voice correctly coming my voice coming to you right hmm good so what i am trying to say to you is that uh you can come here you can collect the data from the people out here you can ask that who how many are online some are like you know some for example last 3 months if they are not well they just leave the course i mean they they, they leave offline they go home and uh, now they become so we have a list of uh, people who were online right and uh, how many marks they got uh, we are very open our system is very uh, open so you can get the marks okay on telephone if you ask you can ask i'll give you the same number the same member he has the list but if you can come though you can very well see hmm? so that is a very good thing that you can yourself know because pakka there will be a doubt in the heart ki at home is it possible to prepare if you ask me i mean i cannot say there are what i said advantage of both advantage of home as well as of college both advantage up to you my dear children in the last class we studied about the basis of classification we were doing the animal classification animal classification is chapter number 4 in the new ncert book i think the number chapter number is different but uh, base the we were doing animal classification animal kingdom kingdom animalia comprise of heterocellular multicellular multicellular heterotroph multicellular heterotroph those who have holozoic mode of nutrition holozoic mode of nutrition they are heterotrophic heterotrophic and they are multicellular multicellular this already you know this you know done okay therefore now we don't keep protozoa any protozoa uh, like amoeba or any uh, paramecium in kingdom animalia they are not animal they are kingdom protista we have done <coughs> that we can classify these animals whatever number that we know the number of species known today as per 2004 iucn iucn as per 2004 iucn how many million species are documented come on guys 
I am asking questions only which you are supposed to know, which is given in your NCRT, please. As per IUCN 2004, how many million species are documented? They are known. Neither 1.7, 1.7 to 1.8, no, not 7 million. Not 7 million. This 1.7 gaya? I think you are Google, you are doing Google. I'll just ask them whether they are doing self chatting or not. Oh, chat to the host while I do. I think they are talking among themselves. I think. Haji, 1.7 or 1.5 or 1.2? IUCN 2004, how many species, total species are known? Chat only to the host. Priya has given the correct answer. Everyone is copying. I think they are they are Googling and through the Google you got this answer. Yeah. I think yeah. Chat. This may not be. This may edit may not be. Which one? Hmm. Who can send message anyone? Reaction, message delay. Okay, I'll just ask them. Are you seeing your each other's? Can you see each other's message or? You are only seeing your own message. Be honest, tell me. Are you able to see each other's message? Hmm? Huh. They can see. Uh, each other. It's not going to be secure. It's the wire. It's the wire. Subscribe, like, comment, like, and Hmm. Participants. Mm -hmm. Participants. Okay. Or for chat. Yes. 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 No, you do polling, Gilead. That's for polling. Okay. Mm -hmm. No problem. They are not disturbing me, but he has to be able to answer the answers. He has to be able to answer the answers. He has to be able to answer the answers. He has to be able to answer the answers. He has to be able to answer the answers. This is a YouTube, not Zoom. It's a new Okay, no problem. Take it.
See, uh, we have got 1.5 million species as per your NCRT beta. I am saying as per your NCRT and out of 1.5 million, 70% uh, are supposed to be animals. And out of the animal species, 70% of them are insect species. So my point is we have a huge number of animals. To study them in one lifetime is impossible. So what we do then? We group them. Okay, we try to classify them into groups. These groups are known as taxon. One group is called taxon and the plural of taxon is taxa. I think I have discussed this much. Taxon, taxa. Okay, right. And this science is known as taxonomy. Taxonomy. So this science, this part of biology, which deal with classification of living organism is known as taxonomy. Clear? Good. We classify organisms on the basis of some similarities and dissimilarities. Some similarities and dissimilarities. Different phylum name I have told you, I'll again, uh, anyone who has attended the class, I think Visheshya, can you please remind me in the last class what I discussed that happened on Saturday, I believe. What I discussed better on the last class? Anyone? Visheshya, I remember. Who? Kirtana. Anyone who attended the last class? It should not happen like I am repeating the things again. Did I tell you the all the species in order like, uh, sorry, all the uh, phylum in order? Okay, planes only. Okay, okay, done. Okay, got it, got it. First step is you should know the different, because we say, that taxon that we will follow is a phylum. Phylum is one of the taxon that we will use in animal classification. 11 phyla are there in our syllabus. But so I am not telling you, I am not giving you geology. Let me tell you, I am teaching you a trick or, you know, <clears throat> I am training you so that you attain maximum marks Without any error, if a question comes from the syllabus of NEET, that is my aim, okay? So be with me and focus. The different animal phyla in the order of their evolution, this has to be memorized thoroughly. The different animal phyla in the order of evolution, starting with phylum porifera, porifera, the common name of porifera, these are called sponges, sponges, followed by phylum nidaria, phylum nidaria, also known as the jellyfishes, jellyfishes, common name, we can call them simply as jellyfishes, then there is a very small phylum uh, known as tenophora, tenophora, Tinophora and uh, tino means comb, comb, and they are commonly called comb jellies. They are commonly called comb jellies. The commonly we call them. After that, we have got phylum, phylum platyhelminthes, platyhelminthes, and you all know platyhelminthes are the flatworms. You all know they are the flatworms. After that, number five. We have got Ascalminthes, Ascalminthes, and Ascalminthes are the round worms, commonly called the round worms, round worms. Okay, then number six, we have got phylum Annelida, Annelida. Now, next phylum in order of evolution is phylum Annelida. And the meaning of annelida means those who have ring on the very tiny ring. Annulus means tiny rings. Okay. Phylum annelida. But these are segmented worms. We can call them as truly segmented worms. Worms. Okay. 
तो फ्लैट वर्म्स राउंड वर्म्स एंड वी आर कॉलिंग देम सेगमेंटेड वर्म्स सेगमेंटेड वर्म्स एनिलेड अप फॉलोड बाय आर्थ्रोपोडा नाउ व्हाट शुड आई राइट कॉमन नेम आर्थ्रोपोडा दीज आर जॉइंटेड लेगेड दीज आर जॉइंटेड लेगेड इन वर्टिब्रेट्स जॉइंटेड लेगेड इन वर्टिब्रेट्स बिकॉज if i call them jointed legged animals then it is wrong na because jointed legged animals it means that uh, we are also <laughs> we have legs we have joints in the leg so jointed legged animal is not correct for them it is better we call them jointed legged invertebrates what is a invertebrate invertebrate are animals without a backbone that means there is no backbone animals without a backbone animals without a backbone jointed legged animals without a backbone after that we have got phylum mollusca mollusca these are uh, soft bodied animals okay soft bodied soft bodied shelled animals very good these are soft bodied shelled animals shelled animals soft bodied shelled animals followed by echinodermata echino means spiny echinodermata derma means derma means come on guys derma means who will answer derma means derma let me see who will answer derma means skin so the first one who answered blessy blessy evangeline manish chala very good skin ramya deleted or to a uh, to skin very good derma means skin okay dermatologist an expert doctor of skin a doctor who is expert in skin echinodermata are spiny skinned animals they are spiny skinned they are spiny skinned animals animals spiny skinned animals followed by hemichordata phylum hemichordata the literal meaning is they are half chordate this is a literal meaning but we commonly call them the tongue worms tongue worms because you know they look like worm at the bottom of the sea they are partly uh, embedded in the mud and their proboscis can be seen as if they have taken out their tongue their proboscis and therefore they are they are called the tongue worms tongue worms okay tongue worms hemichordata beta all these 10 phyla these are non chordate phyla all these 10 phyla are non chordate phyla and the 11th phylum is the phylum chordata 11th phylum is phylum chordata i hope this is clear to everyone phylum chordata okay uh, see i am i have not completed this phyla but what i have done i told you to remember all these 11 names in the order of evolution and this is the order of evolution please this is their order of evolution okay what does this mean it means that before hemichordata on this planet earth echinoderms evolved it means that before echinoderms mollusca came on this planet earth it means that the first very common animals are sessile fixed animals with very small small holes in their body that is the meaning of this order so learn this order beta hmm? this order will help you to uh, you know classify i'll tell you how this will help us to classify today itself we will give some example in which you will understand that how this order is important in classification for classifying we are using several bases and the common basis of class basis means on what basis we are classifying hmm? so the main basis of classification which we have to learn for our neat examination are these 
starting with level of organization level of organization okay it is if you can if you can note down it is okay or if you have ncrt you can just put the dot on ncrt later on when you revise you can underline or you can highlight the important important points see underlining or highlighting should be very careful you have to be very very frugal person very frugal while you know because what happens that when we read in the first time everything looks important every line every word looks important and in the beginning we end up in underlining the entire paragraph which is not the purpose of underlining the purpose of underlining is only that word highlight only that word or that keyword if you just read that the whole story comes in your mind once again if you just read that word or if someone prompt you ki okay this then you speak the whole paragraph hmm? that is the meaning of the keyword it's just like a prompter which can prompt you if you just say this word uh, you know it will be like a prompter it can help you to recall everything that is the purpose of underlining if you underline everything use a highlighter you know fluorescent highlighter green yellow everywhere like a holy you know it look like we have played holy with the book okay it look good but <laughs> it won't be of any use so uh, that's why i say whenever if anything looks very important rather than underlining i use a dot system i put a small dot ki later on if i still feel it then i'll underline but right now i'm just putting a dot okay <clears throat> right so levels of organization or grades of organization how the organisms have been you know they have formed for example long back some you know a cosmic element cosmic dust was there cosmic dust the cosmic dust first condensed into basic elements like hydrogen helium hydrogen helium then form the uh, you know the inorganic molecules inorganic molecules then form the organic monomers organic monomers slowly not slowly means organic monomers in many million years become the organic polymers organic polymers form self replicating metabolic capsules self replicating metabolic capsules they look like the cell they look like living but still they are not, there is nothing wherein they can keep some information about their life then their nucleoprotein complex come together and they start reproducing and then the beginning of the first cell called the protocell adi proto means adi 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 cell hmm? adi koshika the first cell protocell and uh, that is the first you can say the basic unit of life is the cell below that rna dna protein no that is not living self replicating uh, you know like uh, uh, those capsules no they are not living coeservates not they are not living the first living thing is cell so we have cellular grade one is cellular grade you know that cells organized to form see cells can form a cluster a group or they can form a group which behave like a team two things number one cells are coming together they have aggregated number two not only they have aggregated but now they have divided their work and they all are working for a common goal this is aggregation this is simply aggregation and beta this is organization this is organization there is a team work there is a team work okay and when cells form a team work the next grade of organization is called tissue grade of organization cellular is the basic unit of life it is the basic unit of life below that we don't call anything living i know that i am also doing something very basic also because uh, i have got mixed type of students 
सो आई एम डूइंग वेरी बेसिक ऑल्सो बट ऑलवेज कीपिंग इन माइंड दैट वॉट एवर आई एम टेलिंग दैम विल हेल्प दैम टू सॉल्व दी एम सी क्यूज rather than increasing their knowledge the knowledge they can increase when they go to the medical college right now my purpose is so that they make minimum 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 mistake and they make maximum correct answer so always whatever i am speaking and writing on board and emphasizing repeating some tricks i am telling you the purpose is just one they get more marks in the examination okay level of organization or lu <laughs> low level of organization so we have got cellular grade cellular cells can form organization we call them tissues tissues can form organization we can call them organs organs can form organization we can call them organ systems organ systems organ systems can form organization we call organism organism so we are organism living organism animals so we have got 1 2 3 and 4 they can be organized by organized organ system or if they don't have organ system they have organs if they are if their bodies are not made up of organs their bodies are at least made up of tissues and if their bodies are not made up of tissues at least their bodies are made up of cells because animals are multicellular animals so at least their uh, bodies are made up of cells so these are the four grades of organization on which we can say animals have formed now what you have to do is to learn the name of the phylum which have these grade of organization right for example cellular grade where cells are only aggregated and they have not formed any organ or uh, they have not formed any tissues just a cluster just aggregation of cell phylum members of the phylum porifera porifera are such that they have got cellular grade of organization yes into very good cellular grade you people are writing correctly okay ratta <laughs> chapter that that's my purpose is to so that you become you can do the ratta of the chapter or batti ko to the hindi word for for uh, cramming is uh, ratna ratta and the english word is mugging up or cramming and the telugu word is batti ko to so any three word you have to be expert of these three okay but so after that the phylum which have tissues which are the bodies are made up of tissues these phylum these there are two phylum phylum nidaria and phylum tenophora phylum tenophora tenophora learn them along with me now the third one organ organ grade of organization can be seen in platyhelminths okay platyhelminths and organ system grade of organization the next higher one is ask helminths ask helminths so members of the phylum ask helminths their bodies are made up of organ system and that is the highest organization so all the remaining one from ask helminths to chordates okay all the remaining ask helminths then annelida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata and chordata all have same organ system so organ system belong to all of them you understand this so there you re you realize that learning the order is so important see the examples are also like that porifera nidaria tenophora platyhelminthes eschelminthes up to the chordata that is why learning this order is important at many places this will help us to learn the examples levels of organization then second basis of classification will be <clears throat> second is symmetry symmetry i think i, I have uh, missed to write all the basis that we have to go through i have given you the name of the phyla 
I have explained you level of organization, but I on one page I want to write all the six bases that we are supposed to learn. All the six bases, okay? So all the bases that we are supposed to learn are number one, level of organization, number two, symmetry. Symmetry, number three, yes, number three, whether they have diploblastic, either they are diploblastic or triploblastic or triploblastic, then silom, silom, then segmentation, 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 and number six is, number six is notochord, notochord. Please learn that we are going to do these bases. After telling you all these phylum name to remember in the order, this is the order of their evolution. This is the order of their evolution. Okay. Therefore, this order is important. Before that, I just gave you the purpose of taxonomy, the purpose of classification. We classify organisms into groups. The groups are called taxon. One group taxon, the taxa is the plural of taxon. And the science of grouping is called taxonomy, right? For animals, the taxon which is most important is phylum. To little importance, we also use class, but mainly we will use the taxon phylum. We have in our syllabus 11 phyla, the name which I have written on the next page. And why the purpose of grouping them? I told you that in 2004, IUCN, International Union of, uh, you know, IUCN, International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. Right, so <clears throat> both conservation of nature as well as conservation of natural resources, both can be said about IUCN. They found that 1.5 million, how many? 1.5 million species. I'm giving you, don't Google it, I'm giving you what is given in the NCRD. The chapter is in the second year, a chapter called Biodiversity and Conservation. In that chapter, you will get this datum. Datum, singular datum, plural data, datum one. Because it is one, the datum, okay? That should be your reflex. While speaking, try to speak as much as possible. And without thinking, it should be a reflex. Done. So out of this 1.5 million, uh, all species, all the, including every, out of these, 70% of them are animals. And out of those 70%, you know that 70% of the 70% are insect. Just remember, 70% of all the living organism species, species, I'm talking about diversity, not the total number. I'm not talking about the population, I'm talking about the variety, the species. 70% of them are animal species. And out of those 70% animal species, okay, 70% species are insect species. Right? So just keep in mind such a huge group we are doing. That is the reason we classify them into groups. The different phyla, 11 phyla that we have to learn, I have written their name in the order of evolution. After that, what are the basis of classification? There are six bases of classification. I have written them here. <clears throat> Better, there are six bases of classification that we should know. Okay, the six bases of classification, level of organization, then symmetry, whether they are diploblastic or triploblastic, that means the layers in the embryo, coelom present or not, segmentation present or not, notochord present or not. These are the six bases that we should know to classify the living organism. The first basis is level of organization. On this basis, 
we have got four different type of animals, animal species. Some species where the members have cellular grade, some species where members have uh, tissue grade, some phylum where the members have organ grade, and some phylum where the members are organ, they have organ system grade. Some phylum where the members have cellular grade, for example, phylum porifera. Where tissue grade of organization, phylum nidaria and tenophora. Organ grade of organization, platyhelminths. And organ system grade of organization, ashelminths. Now, this is very basic, very simple. Hmm? Please remember, go to page number 60. Everyone, go to page number 60 of your NCRT. And answer this question. First, you go to page number 60 and answer this question. The level of organization in platyhelminths, in platyhelminths, in platy, <clears throat> what do you commonly call them? Yes, flatworms. Good. Now, these are the different options you have. Number one, cellular, okay, or they have organ grade organ grade or they have organ system grade or they have both uh, both the uh, organ organ and organ system grade organ system grade that means some have organ some have organ, some members of this phylum have organ system grade. Level of organization in the phylum platyhelminthes. Question is, level of organization, go to page number 60 and answer. Option 1, 2, 3, 4. You have to simply answer in 1, 2, 3, 4 only. Come on. <clears throat> answer in 1, 2, 3, 4. Many people are answering correctly. I am getting many people are answering correctly. Very, very good. I think everyone is answering correctly. Wonderful. Very good. Everyone is answering correctly. And the correct answer is answer four. Answer four. Okay. Very good. Now, if I ask you, the first phylum, the first phylum to have organ system grade organ system grade of organization. The first phylum to have organs, to show organ system grade of organization. Options. Now, I'm, I don't have place to write the option. Just name the phylum. This is again another question. The first phylum to have organ system grade of organization. The first phylum to have organ system grade of organization the first no one has given the correct answer so far i think uh, shirinu has given shirinu mulasa has given the correct answer now kirtana correct answer but they better correct answer first phylum to have organ system grade anil kumar answer is correct beta the first phylum to show organ system grade sheshadri Idupugal, Idupuganti, correct answer. Spruti, nahi beta. Durga Prasad, answer correct. And Manish, answer correct. Sharanya, answer correct. Yashaswini, answer correct. Okay, now you can see each other's answer, na? Okay, so I, there is no fun here. Okay. So yes, it is platyhelminth is beta. You know that the platyhelminth, platyhelminth is the first phylum, platyhelminth. Platyhelminths, where some of the members, some of the members, you know, they have uh, organ system grade. Therefore, here there is a little issue and uh, we have to follow this. I, I, very rarely I can expect such a question, but just making you prepared because many students ask, sir, if it comes in the examination, I said, usually it comes, you can answer platyhelminths, organ grade. But if they give you option like this, then give this answer. Otherwise, there is no problem. 
it makes another option the first phylum to have organ system grade members of which phylum we can say phylum platyhelminthes because some advanced platyhelminthes they have got organ system that's it level of organization i pend after level of organization the next one is symmetry symmetry means the body design is in such a way that by dividing the body in one plane we can get two parts which are mirror images which are identical mirror images if we can divide if we can divide a body into two parts which are identical mirror images that design is a symmetric design and if not then it is asymmetric very easy so on the basis of symmetry on the basis of symmetry organisms can be symmetric or asymmetric okay they can have symmetry a symmetric asymmetric or they can be symmetric symmetric theek hai beta now asymmetric or symmetric symmetry can be of different types symmetry can be of different types it can be radial symmetry radial radial symmetry or it can be bilateral bilateral symmetry it can be radial symmetry it can be bilateral symmetry now radial symmetry is which symmetry symmetry where there are many planes where the body can be divided through many planes where many planes passing through the center which can divide the body into two identical halves usually a spherical design is such that usually a cylindrical design is such that a cylindrical one where many planes are there many planes which pass through the center can divide the body into two identical halves this type of symmetry is called radial symmetry bilateral symmetry the meaning is bilateral there is a single plane and if we divide the body through that single plane we can have two lateral sides two lateral sides okay for example suppose this design uh, suppose this design okay now in this design uh, we cannot have multiple planes we can have only one plane one plane now this plane can divide the body into right side and left side means two lateral sides so two lateral sides this type of symmetry is called bilateral beta don't get confused by bi remember here the plane is only one single plane two sides a single plane but two sides bilateral symmetry two lateral sides through a single plane radial multiple planes multiple planes passing through the center radial symmetry bilateral symmetry one plane two lateral sides okay done so this is the meaning of symmetry on the basis of symmetry if i give you examples asymmetric and symmetric so <clears throat> asymmetric asymmetric example phylum porifera most of the members of phylum porifera are asymmetric going to symmetry or symmetric we have got two type of symmetry radial and bilateral radial and bilateral bilateral okay radial radial symmetry examples of radial symmetry number 1 we have phylum nidaria nidaria number 2 phylum tinophora tinophora phylum nidaria tinophora number 3 adults adults of echinodermata remember adults of echinodermata adults of echinodermata they have radial symmetry bilateral symmetry bilateral from phylum platyhelminths platyhelminths beta platyhelminths platyhelminths two phylum two phylum 
<clears throat> all all remaining chordata lateral meninges to chordata they have bilateral symmetry radial symmetry is only found in lideria tenophora and secondary symmetry in echinodermata beta please remember and adults of echinodermata or secondary symmetry in echinodermata here we have only one example phylum porifera where most members are asymmetric remaining phylum all symmetric phylum radially symmetric phylum lideria tenophora adults of echinodermata like the starfish like the starfish so you can very well imagine the design also it is pentamerous radial symmetry platyhelminths to chordata they are bilaterally symmetrical even the ncrt picture of platyhelminths you can see that it is it can be divided by a mid sagittal plane okay beta good make sense okay now primary symmetry and secondary symmetry symmetry of larva symmetry of larva is called primary symmetry primary symmetry and symmetry of adults adults is called secondary symmetry secondary symmetry make sense can you remember this primary symmetry secondary symmetry can you remember bachcho right symmetry of larva larva primary primary baad mein kya ho gaya secondary ho gaya theek hai okay for example primary symmetry for example primary symmetry in primary symmetry in echinoderms echinodermata and uh, secondary symmetry secondary symmetry in echinodermata who will answer this question come on who will answer this question primary symmetry in echinodermata and secondary symmetry in echinodermata come on primary symmetry batao answer first question this one primary symmetry in echinodermata ha huh, you can write like that radial radial bilateral 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 radial radial bilateral like that also you can write okay so primary symmetry is bilateral very good very good answer you know this fact it is bilateral primary symmetry is bilateral larva is bilaterally symmetrical and what about the adults secondary symmetry just now i told you secondary to bataya na we yeah second one is radial theek hai that is radial secondary symmetry is radial symmetry primary symmetry is bilateral example in echinodermata echinodermata you know just now you saw adults adults of echinodermata it means secondary symmetry ante secondary symmetry when we talk about adults we are talking about secondary symmetry can i give you one more example one more example let's take one more example okay the primary symmetry primary symmetry in mollusca mollusca are very unusual in mollusca in some mollusca some mollusca mollusks like the snails they belong to the group gastropoda gastropoda primary symmetry primary symmetry in some mollusca like snails okay they have bilateral bilateral and secondary symmetry secondary symmetry this is absent or lost primary symmetry in some mollusca bilateral and secondary symmetry is absent lost in some mollusca they belong to gastropoda some mollusca they belong to gastropoda gastropoda poda means legs gastro means stomach their legs are on their belly like that hmm? gastropoda 
their adults are asymmetric adults are asymmetric but their larva is bilaterally symmetrical now do you notice this that uh, actually we cannot say that uh, this phylum is asymmetric no moreover it is only few animals right actually this is modification when the larva modify into adult this is called metamorphosis okay when the larva larva changes into adults adults this is called metamorphosis 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 okay metamorphosis generally in metamorphosis what happens that a trait sometimes simple after that it become complex simple character become complex character or it uh, sometimes simple remain simple or complex remain complex but here do you notice an advanced character is now becoming a simple character advanced means later simple means primitive prachin primitive the primitive character is radial and bilateral is advanced character you understand so what is happening this metamorphosis there is no progress it is not progressive it is not progressive rather rather it is retrogressive retrogressive okay beta so example in gastropoda in gastropoda now this page or this slide this slide if you are not able to understand this slide don't take any don't waste your time if you understood fine but if you are finding difficulty in understanding you can leave that okay this slide is uh, also like that only i mean if you can understand gastropoda just forget about that it is just a class and we don't talk about classes of any phylum some mollusca we can take i have given example where larva is bilateral adult is asymmetric but till here beta please remember for the examination and as you go with me my promise to you is all the questions that are there in the exam that are there in the ncrt or that are based on the ncrt you will be able to do that since we are connected through the online medium soft medium and i can share any type of material i can come across uh, a type of material which is retrogressive i mean to say which makes your work easier and not complicated the whole scenario is to make the things easier the problem in online coaching is that and i have also faced long back but now last 5 6 years people have changed actually online we don't know our client the student we don't know who is listening sometimes some computers are listening sometimes uh, their parents are listening you know you don't know so every teacher wanted to give their best so the teacher sometimes find it uh, uh, you know not comfortable in making the things very simple right it may give an impression ki yaar uh, he is very basic no i have in my evolution of teaching i found that the more advanced you become the more senior you become the easiest uh, your know, concept you teach the more easy it should be more easy more easy so that the purpose should not be lost and the purpose is to to not make you geologist or botanist or chemist or physicist the purpose is to get maximum marks in neat so that you can go and become doctors in your uh, dream medical college all the very best bachcho okay and uh, online classes will run as usual throughout the year yes beta it will run as usual 
in which one is biradially symmetrical. Now, this is this type of question, like Sharanya. Sharanya has asked one question about biradial symmetry. Now, biradial symmetry is a type of radial symmetry. For example, in case of Tinophora, they have they are bilateral, they are biradially symmetrical. But better if I take some 15 minutes to teach you this and to try you try to make you understand biradial that how it is different, I don't think so that will be wise. But for your answer, Sharanya, answer is it is in tenophora, biradial symmetry in phylum tenophora. Yes, retro retrogressive is opposite of progressive. See, if something is advancing, increasing, increasing, this is called progress. Progress. Countries progressing. Progress. If it is not, it is going even lesser and lesser. It is called retrogression, retrogression, progression, retrogression. Okay. Uh, two equal half. Offline is best than online due to distractions. Uh, it's up to you, beta. Uh, right, left, right. Chintu, Punu. Actually, there is, you know, what happens? The two sides, it is actually uh, what happens that. The two sides, if you cut the body, the two are not the two lateral sides. Right now, if you cut me like this, you can get two lateral sides, right lateral and left lateral. But there are certain designs you can cut and you can get two identical halves. But they are not the right and left sides of the body. So that is radial. But since only one plane is there, it is bilateral. So it is a mixture of both. Therefore, they call it biradial. But 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 it is out of syllabus. Don't take any tension. Tinophora is given as radially symmetrical. Okay, beta. All the very best. Bye bye. Take care. God bless you all. Love you all. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, beta. Hmm. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye, Vasu. I hope you understood. Okay, better Sharanya, I hope I, I could answer your question. Manish, you understood. Very good. Isha Swini. Bye-bye. Sharanya, I love you too, beta. Chintu, I love you, beta. Everyone, God bless. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Durga Prasad, bye-bye. Where is uh, today? Where is that guy gone? Shrey. Yeah. Vishesha. Today Vishesha is absent. Ramya Royal in starfish also. We can see biradial. Uh, starfish, beta, it is pentamerous radial. It is better to use pentamerous radial symmetry. Shyam Chandu Vishesha has come. I am present. Okay, beta, Vishesha. Okay. Ramana, very good. Bye bye. Take care. God bless you all and meet you on the next time. Bye bye.